Welcome back to the Brew Crew Podcast, everyone. This is episode 127. This is Brew Crew Snowden. 2021. 2021, a brand new Snowden version of Brew Crew Podcast, where we sit in our houses, and uh, that's it. And it's a little cold outside. Yep. And we're both tired from shoveling. Exactly. Yeah, too much yeah. shoveling, um, not enough snow. Did you get, like, how, did you measure? Do you know how much you guys got in inches over there? I didn't measure. It looks, it looks to be about seven or eight inches. Yeah, there, there was like a fine line somewhere to where I ended up with shitloads of ice pellets. Oh, hours, that's hours much upon, different. Hours upon hours of where it didn't look like it was snowing at all because it was mm. tiny little ice pellets. So I only, I only got three inches here. Oh, well, that's good. But yeah. it was heavy ice. It was heavy ice. Okay. Well, yeah, we got a ton of fluffy snow. That's nice. Like, uh, eight inches or so. Wow. So it, it was heavy, but uh, it wasn't ice. Yeah. I was able to use a snowblower for a little bit of it. Uh, mostly shoveling. Yeah. Yeah. So that's where, uh, so we're here. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's it. But we had planned on, we had planned on uh, this anyway. Matt wasn't going to be here from the get go. From the, but it just, because of the snow, we couldn't do this in person. But here we are, episode 127. I think we should jump right into beer news. Let's do it. All right, what you got? All right, I have uh, something near and dear to my heart. Uh, growing up as a child, my favorite movies were Indiana Jones, mm. the whole Indiana Jones line. And, of course, that triggered me to want to become an archaeologist. And yeah. uh, elementary school, middle school, high school, growing up, I wanted to be an archaeologist. And I really kind of moved that path. And then I learned as I was approaching, you know, graduation and time to go to college. It turns out that archaeologists uh, are very poor, very, very poor people because uh, there's just not a lot of archaeological work to do. It's yeah. mainly in academia. And anyway, I, I lost interest in that. However, I still maintain interest in archaeology. So I love it when it's in the news and it's in the news, especially in regards to beer. Uh, they found, archaeologists found the, um, the oldest brewery in the world to date. It's, it was found in Egypt, um, and it's approximately 5,000 years old, um, and this thing is massive. Uh, per batch, they could brew 6,000 gallons of beer per batch. Damn. So it was a massive, large-scale, like, industrial operation once they learned how to um, farm and agriculture, then they quickly quit making bread and they made beer instead. Yeah, of course. Smart Egypt. Egypt. We, need, we need beer more than bread. Yes. So that's that's my beer news. It's it's pretty uh pretty weak. Uh, a lot of people aren't going to find that interesting, other than other chuggalo archaeologists, which there's probably not a lot. Of no, them. it's interesting because now when you when we talk about ancient ales. Now we can mimic oh, yeah. that process and make real ancient ale. Real. Like, the, like, I mean, Egypt pretty much invented beer, right? Uh, yeah. So, yeah, so we can just we just go back to the source. And I also like Indiana Jones. I think uh, I went to Petra, and they do, I think it's the third one. Yeah. Holy Grail. Oh, yeah. They go to Petra. Now, the inside of that uh, big column uh, building is not as large and there's no hidden chambers like in the movie right but i looked but i did look for them yeah so that old, like, they're, that old they're there and i'm gonna find something yeah that old knight wasn't in there no the old knight wasn't in there the chalices weren't in there <clears throat> you know there was no uh like secret trap pathways that can kill you none of that stuff <sighs> real life is so disappointing just a big ass room where people stayed i guess but uh, it's a cool place. I so I, like I, I have an interest in. I don't know that I have an interest in studying those things, uh, but I am interested in seeing them. Yeah, you know, like uh, it's crazy how they can go back and figure out how it was all done. Yeah, that's the you know, like how they built it or how the pyramids were built or whatever. That just is crazy to me. I just look at them and be like, aliens, aliens built this. Well, of course. Yeah, because it's easier. That's, it's easier yeah. to deduce. Yeah, that's and it's the truth. 
It is the truth. I've heard that. PBS had a special like that. Like, what did aliens build? And it's PBS. I mean, we're not talking about History Channel 2. We're right. talking about PBS. So it's legit. That is legit. Too legit to quit. It is. So I didn't quit. I just kept watching. Good. So uh, my beer news this week is that it is beer week in California, craft beer week in California. For the first time ever, because of lockdowns, it's going to be statewide. It's usually, I think, in San Francisco. So they are doing a virtual statewide California craft beer week. There's some decent beer in California. Very decent beer. Yeah, very decent. Like, really good. Uh, Yes. So, I I mean, it's just your typical virtual beer fest, I'm guessing. Uh, Hopefully not like the one we introduced last year when when we started all these lockdowns, where it was like you have to pay for your own six-pack or some shit. Remember that? That That was the Great American Beer Fest in Colorado, which is... The, it's the biggest beer fest and yeah that these virtual beer fest I, I mean i obviously understand the necessity for them yeah just due to the pandemic but right i have zero zero interest in that whatsoever right sitting and drinking on camera with a bunch of strangers yeah I, me too uh but yeah so it's going to be uh this next this coming week and uh yeah you could if you're in california and you want to do that go ahead you can, I don't know, you can purchase something for this. Uh, from some breweries are selling specific beer for this, this thing. Um, but in Ohio, you can't do beer shipping anymore. Yeah. So if you're in Ohio, then just don't worry about it. <clears throat> but uh, I did have a, a very interesting beer I wanted to talk about. Oh, okay. I, had, I, had a, I had a cannoli sour from Platform. Right in your head, you're like, "Nah, that's not gonna work. It's gonna be absolutely terrible." So I'll buy these gimmick beers, and I'll I know that they're gonna suck. So I buy one, yeah, and I try it, and it's awful, or it's really good, and then whatever. But this beer was hands down, it they delivered in every way you could possibly deliver. It was awesome. Cannoli sour. Cannoli sour. So it was basically like drinking a creamy sour beer yeah it sounds like cream go ahead it sounds like it would be like a key lime pie beer yeah it was a lot like a key lime pie but the cream had that like that rich chocolatey kind of uh not chocolatey but like a like a sweet milk uh flavor like you would get in a cannoli um and that 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 flavor that like pistachio flavor that kind of is baked into that hard shell that was in there. I couldn't believe it. It was amazing. And I was worried about the sour part, really, that this is going to be kind of gross, like drinking sour milk. But it wasn't. It was really good. So I, I, it was highly uh, um, thought of in our house. We rated it very highly on Untapped, And uh, they still have it in stores. Really? So, it's, so that I wanted to bring it up before they got rid of it. They have it. So Stev is listening. Go nice. to Crispy Crunchy Shell. And they have it there. They still have a couple four packs there. Um, and then if you can't, I'll go pick you one up. Just let me know, and I'll get I'll get one for you. But that's all I got. Other than snow, that's solid. <clears throat> that that's sucks. A, yeah, that's a good segue. The the milk the milk part you bring up because mm-hmm. the first beer that we're going to review is uh, the Three Sheep's Brewing mm. um, Bon Bon. Cool. Which is a chocolate milk stout. Um, so let's see here. You want to crack it and I'll read about it? Yeah, let's crack it open. Read, I'll read to the camera. Uh, three, two, one. Cheers, everyone. Okay. Okay, so this is, uh, like I said, from Three Sheeps Brewing. This is from the Craft Beer Club that I have a uh, subscription to. Uh, oh, sweet. This is from Chuggalo Emily. Um, so Three Sheeps Brewing is out of – all right, I'll let you guess. You can take a, take a wild guess without reading where it's from. Yeah, I didn't. I put the bottle down. I haven't read it. Where's Three Sheeps? Uh, it's relevant hmm. to us. Oh, it's not, relevant to us. Not you and I in a relationship-wise, but the three of us. Okay. Oh. 
Um, Pennsylvania. Okay, close, but not really. Uh, Sheboygan, Wisconsin. Oh, okay. I was guessing like if you build a triangle, oh. maybe Pennsylvania was somewhere in the middle of that triangle of our hometowns and where we are now. I, or not a triangle, but more of a diamond. I was just trying to be creative. I knew that wasn't the right answer. I like that. Sheboygan. You, I like that your brain immediately moves to polygons. Yeah, it has to. It's shapes. Shapes. Got to be shapes. Um, so, yeah. So, Three Sheeps Brewing is from Sheboygan, Wisconsin. I'm curious if Matt has ever heard of them. Um, but they are a microbrew. Uh, they've been around since 2012. Uh, they got their name, Three Sheeps, from a play on the phrase three sheets to the wind. Mmm, clever. I like it. I like it more now. Three sheeps due to lots yeah. of sheep farming in Wisconsin. Um, <clears throat> and those are really the highlights. It, it says in this little write-up from Craft Beer Club that they give you, it says that, you know, it's got this little catchphrase from three sheeps, equal parts creativity and science, scientific process. Uh, they like to brew with science, but then they never mention anything about why or how they incorporate science, other mm -hmm. than the fact that it is a very scientific process um, right. with the reactions. Um, but that's pretty much it. Uh, and that's been the filler while you've had an opportunity to drink mm -hmm. the bonbon. Should I talk about the beer itself some? Sure. Okay. So this is bonbon, chocolate milk stout. It's a 5.5%, uh, 13 IBUs, um, and it's got a little write-up of, of what it's about, that they, they, how they describe it, but I don't need to read you that. It's not very good or creative. Okay. Um, I mean, I had some thoughts. There's a lot going on with the can art. Let me look this up real quick. I'm trying to figure out. <clears throat> um, Okay, so I, I originally, um, so the name Bon Bon reminded me of the show um, Married with Children, show from the 90s. Yeah. I believe Bon Bons were a thing that Peggy Bundy used to eat a lot of, or at least the husband accused her of eating a lot of, or the husband in some way used Bon Bon in several episodes. <laughs> Al Bundy, um, Bundy, right? Al Bundy. I'm not an expert on Married with Children, but it, you know it was on in the house when I was a kid. Yeah, and I know that you know TV back then, entertainment in general was a lot different. Yeah. Um, uh, you so you know part of part of Married with Children was that he worked at a women's shoe store and he would just tear into these women because they were all overweight and it, you couldn't do that now. Not that it would be you would want to, but you know bonbons. I remember. I'm just connecting that word with married with children. Um, uh, I thought they were like those uh, mushy marshmallow round cakes. You know what I'm talking about? But they're yeah. not. They're actually the liqueur filled chocolates. Yes. They, I didn't know that. I think the bonbons should be filled with liquor. Really. Liquor, yeah. Yeah, I just looked that up and that's true. So I had bonbon wrong. Um, but this has a very, uh, this, so this is a camera boner segment. Now it's brought to you by Emily. Has she got yeah. this? Yep. This brought is to it. You by Emily. Thanks, Emily. Uh, so this can art here is, uh, very, it reminds me of Valentine's day. Valentine's day just passed and you get these like boxes of random assortments of chocolate, even though these are all probably filled with liquor or liqueur. Um, that's kind of what this, uh, what the feeling has here. Of, uh, of this can art i also like this like we have a kind of a version of this wisconsin thing in ohio where they have like a three in it Ooh. we have like uh something about being brewed in ohio yeah um yeah and then they do this brewed with heart and science but again they don't and they do it here too they right. don't talk about what science they're brewing with um and I think you'd have if you're if you're three sheeps brewing and you're listening. I think that there are there's an audience for that, you know, text. Yes, I think people want to know what you're talking about. There okay. are people it's out science. there who want to know about science. Um, and it was bottled on one six. This is a very fresh beer. Extremely fresh. I noticed that as well. 
Yeah, very fresh. Uh, so that's the can art. There's not a whole, I mean, other than being kind of just like a random assortment of chocolates, just like any box of chocolates would be. Not much going on. The colors do have like a chocolatey milk kind of color to them. For the flavor, the first thing I thought of was like, wow, this beer doesn't have a beer flavor. This has um, a coffee chocolate flavor to it. I can't say chocolate milk. I don't taste like the creaminess of chocolate milk is something unique. You'd know. This has more of like a coffee chocolate uh, or a mocha kind of flavor. Uh, but then I realized that it was 5.5%. And that probably is why you expect a stout, um, but you're getting some very light, like a light beer, basically. Just, yeah. just a, a level above like a light beer. Right. So that's super light. Um, and it does taste light. It's very like, uh, what's that word, Matt? I always use viscous. Uh, it's less, it's not viscous. It's very liquidy. Um, yeah, I mean, it's got a good flavor. I don't think it's got anything that gives it an edge over, uh, you know, other chocolate milk beers, other milk stouts. But I like the light alcohol. I like the the lightness of it. It's really, really good, especially on this cold, freezing day. I've been outside in the cold all day, um, and this beer doesn't um, make me cringe with more coldness. It's actually really kind of warming. Um, it's good. It's good. 4.0. 4.0 on this beer, yeah. Uh, man, I uh, I I definitely wanted this beer to be more um, chocolate milk stout. I definitely mm -hmm. uh, maybe if it was nitro, it would be creamy. Oh yeah, maybe. You know. Yeah. You know, then it would be more chocolate chocolate milky. Good uh, thinking. You described it really really well though. Uh, it is it's very light. Uh, mm -hmm. it's very, um, it's not heavy, uh, lower alcohol content. It's good. It's a, yeah. it's, it's a fine beer. I think it delivers what it's supposed to deliver. Cause I do get chocolate and I do get that, that burnt maltiness that gives off like the, the coffee kind of flavor. Um, <clears throat> and it's really easy to drink. Uh, but it's just not doing anything great for me. Yeah. Um, so you are at four. I think I'm. I think I'm at a three point five. Um, it's a. It's a fine beer. It's just not doing anything to really elevate itself. It's a. Yeah. It's a good quality beer. Uh, I bet it would be even better at the bar at like at the brewery if they would. Yeah. Like it. I, I bet it would be absolutely outstanding. Um, but they should nitro this beer. It's Definitely. just three point five. I'll have. I'll bring some of these next week so Matt can have. Matt can have these as well, especially. Especially this one, since it is from Wisconsin, mm -hmm. I'm sure he'll chime in on social media soon to let yeah. us know if he's familiar with three sheets or not. Since he is so familiar with everything, yeah, he knows. I think he knows every Wisconsin detail, fact, every fact about Wisconsin. If it exists and it's in Wisconsin, Matt knows that and Minnesota. I think he's kind of got that. He's got a lot of Minnesota knowledge too. Yeah. <clears throat> But as we as we know, as we've developed on this, they're the same thing. Oh yeah, the same thing. Make sure, yeah, they're the same thing. Don't don't not confuse them. They yeah. want you to confuse them. Yeah, within Minnesota and Wisconsin, they are very separate, and they can't stand each other. But to the rest of the whole world, no one cares. It's all one. Right. Place. It's all one bubble. It's like Minnesconsin. That's what I just worked out in my head. I like that. I like that. Minnesconsin. Or Minsconsin. Or West Whatever. West West Coda. West Coda. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I like, don't know. I like Minnesconsin. That's pretty Minnesconsin. good. Minnesconsin. That's what it is. Uh, it's one state now. Congratulations. You've been joined. Yeah. Um, Matt made sure he wanted to say that we should <laughs> conflate the two as much as possible while he's gone. Yeah. Uh, yeah, he, he sent me a text as well. Okay, good. Yeah, he wants to make sure that the Minnesotans and the Wisconsinians, the Wisconsinians feel no love, that they feel like we've forgotten about them. Because you know what? We probably have, mostly. Yeah. Not them as people, but as states. 
Yeah, I mean, I don't even know where they are. I, I Until we get three sheeps. Three sheeps to the win. Now we, we care about Wisconsin again. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't know where they are on a map. No, I don't know either. But I'm sure a lot of Wisconsin people and Minnesota people are now pissed off. So now we should probably just move to a different state Let's with the beer. On. You know, a different state that's still up on the same, you know, uh, latitude. Yeah. Technically, I think it borders one of those states, if my old map memory serves. Um, so the beer in the brewery that JT is referring to is, once again, uh, Dark, House, Dark Horse Brewing. Um, this is out of Marshall, uh, Marshall of <laughs> Michigan. Um, we've reviewed Dark Horse. We've talked about Dark Horse a lot. We've reviewed one of them a few weeks ago, the uh, the Reserve Special Black Ale, which was delicious. Mm -hmm. So in these craft beer boxes, I get um, <laughs> I get six beers from two breweries, uh, three beers of one kind, three beers of another across two breweries. So I get four different beers from two breweries in one box, and I keep getting these boxes. Um, so, awesome. so we're kind of, I just got an email to actually last night saying that my next box was ready to ship and we've only had one beer out of the other box. <laughs> this is all I really use this beer for at this point, um, which is great. So we're going to ultimately, we'll probably revisit three sheeps. Uh, this will cash mm -hmm. out our course, um, but we will get to revisit, uh, some of the other breweries as well. Um, so you'll see some of these breweries kind of, uh, Overlap a little bit. Let's let's drink on this. Works for me. It's pretty good. Three, two, one. Okay, so we're cracking the dark horse. It's called Crooked Tree. This is the uh, the IPA, and it says that it's unfiltered and unpasteurized. Um, it it seven, smells different. It's seven percent. It says it's like super dry hops. Um, and I, I know that we did cover dark horse, but you know, once again, we get. I get these things from Craft Brewery that tells you all about it. Uh, Dark Horse was founded in 1997, so they're a little bit – Yeah. They've been, they've been in the game for a long time. They're right? an OG. Yeah. yeah they are an OG. Um, <clears throat> they are brewing uh, up to 20,000 barrels of craft beer per year. That's a lot. Yeah. In case anyone was wondering, 20,000 is a big number for, you know – there's a comma in there and lots of zeros. <laughs> it's a big number. That's what's, important. What's common? What's a typical number for a, a smaller brewery? Twelve. Oh, well, I mean, that's a huge number then. They're basically a big player. I'm just kidding. I don't know. No, I know. I was just playing along. Um, that, that's all we're going to talk about. Dark Horse. They, yeah, they Dark set Horse. far high with their reserve, their reserve mm -hmm. special black ale. I haven't even had a sip of this. So I'm going to have a sip. I need to rinse my the flavor of that darker beer out. See, I didn't know which one to do with yeah. these beers. I thought that IPA um, would really wreck the palate. Yeah, yeah. I would make the same choice. So that's just the way it goes. Um, <clears throat> this is solid, though. I like this. It's got an interesting taste. It's a taste that... Uh, I'm familiar with. I'm gonna have to look this beer up a little and see what what's in it. But Crooked Tree, they should do a collab with Crooked Handle. Well, I mean Dark Horse should. Yeah. Do a, a collaboration with Crooked Handle and do like a Crooked Handle beer. I don't know. But this Crooked Tree, this is the Can Art Boner segment brought to you by Emily. Thanks, Emily. Uh, it's got a vibe. There's always, there's some movies that there's always like this isolated tree in a field. Has no other trees around it. Has a weird look to it. In Pocahontas, there's the tree of life. In, uh, in Forrest Gump, there's the tree where Jenny wants to be made into a bird to fly far away. Shawshank Redemption. Yeah, Shawshank Redemption. Andy Dufresne buried that little treasure box under that tree. That's right. There's always like a weird tree. So there's a story to this tree because it has, there has to be. There's yeah. a pail next to it. Uh, and it, we've not been, been given an indicator that anything grows in this tree that you would need a pail for. So this pail is important. 
And we're going to, I'm sure Dark Horse is going to release why. Maybe in a movie, you know, full feature length movie with uh, lots of stars. Or maybe on their website, they'll do like a comic book thing. But that pale, it matters. It's just there for no reason. You think it's a hop tree? It's a hop tree. It could be a hop tree. You think it's a barley tree? It's a barley. Yeah, it could be both. Maybe it's a hot barley tree. Oh, that's it. They have mutated it. Maybe it's a beer tree. Maybe beer grows on this tree. That's I think, and that's what the pale's for. It's like you tap it like a maple syrup tree. Oh. Mm -hmm. So that's it. We've gotten to the bottom of that. It's a beer tree. Mystery solved. Mystery solved, and it's very crooked. Um, Trees typically don't grow like that unless they've been influenced by uh, uh, some other entity. Influenced. Uh, influenced. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, by influencers, right? Like, by influencers. Like, yeah, Instagram people. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh-huh. YouTube, yeah, YouTube that's a good point. Um, but this tree was definitely messed up in some way. I'm not sure how it gets that crooked when there's nothing around it to mess it up. Uh, unless it was Jenny's dad and all his yelling. Um, but yeah, so the can art, it's, it's actually a, an appealing bottle uh, label. Um, just make, I, I'm joking, but it's fine. Um, nothing special about it unless they tell you there's something special about it. What is a crooked tree? What does that mean to the brewery? I don't know. We've had a lot of beers with names. What does Bon Bon mean? I don't fucking know. Um, but what does crooked tree mean to the beer? I don't know. Um, what does boat show mean to an IPA? What does truth mean to an IPA? I don't know. So IPAs just have these names. Uh, and sometimes you make the name based on the art. Sometimes you make the art based on the name. I'm not sure which they, which they did here, but it's um, it's fine. I think that Dark Horse should put science on their cans and call it and say and make one that's called Dork Horse by Dark Horse. Wow. And it's all about science. It's just drinking science. Just drinking science. It's like you I mean, can go to college and you can learn science, or you can just buy a bottle of science and drink it. You could just buy Dork Horse. Buy drink. If dork. they could put like you know, uh, like mathematical equations on like that edible glitter, and put it inside the beer. I mean, that's really drinking science right there. It is, yeah, yeah. Right, writing, writing out equations on edible panties and then dissolving them into edible beer. Edible panties. <laughs> <laughs> That's a, that's yeah, a, it was just Valentine's Day. I'm sure you ate a lot of panties, right? That's a, Every Valentine's Day, we feast on panties, edible <laughs> panties. We make them for breakfast, lunch, and dinner. And we're, by the time we go to bed, I mean, we're full. It's for the we're whole family. It's not even, a, not even a sexual thing. It's just a day of feasting on edible panties. That's right. That's all we do. That's what Valentine's Day is all about. I thought everyone did that. Well, yeah, that's why we're talking about it. That's, yeah. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> I got to verify my age. Oh, shit. Dark Horse, you just lost some points here. Oh. oh this verify your age thing, and instead of just... So any brewery that just does the, like, I am 21 check here, and you just hit go, you win. But when you st have to, like, select your birthday, jeez Louise. Isn't that what shit? does it matter? What does it matter if I select... I'm never going to tell you the right birthday. Um, I feel like they're infringing upon my First Amendment. They are. The right to not tell breweries your birthday. It's the fifth clause. Um, trying to find this beer here. I got it. Found it. Uh, there's something in this that I just... And they say often described as grapefruit. Yes. I don't taste the grapefruit. Man, what am I tasting in this beer? It says that it's heavily dry hopped. And it... Mm -hmm. To give it a big aroma of pine and citrus. The flavors are big, yet very balanced between fresh hops and malt. So is it off-putting? It's got to be the malt. Is it making you happy? Yeah, there's something, there's something less IPA about this beer. Less IPA. Less, less IPA-ish, which can be a good thing. It, it kind of sets you apart. But in this case, it's got to be the malts. I'm just not, I just don't know what it is. 
Um, it's not a bad beer. I like it actually. Um, I, there's just some hint of something in there that I'm not huge. I'm not very fond of. Um, I don't know that I would select this beer again. 3.0 from me. Uh, drinkable uh, has good hop flavor, but there's something something in there that I'm not not fond of. Yeah, and it's not grapefruit. If it was grapefruit, I'd be all over this beer. So you don't you disagree with them saying that this tastes like grapefruit? I disagree that. Well, they say that others have described it as grapefruit. I disagree with those others. Oh, okay. Yes, yeah. yeah. they're they're covering their butts by saying someone else said it. Others, yeah. I haven't I haven't heard that, but uh, people say it. Um, yeah, I don't I don't. I don't taste grapefruit, but you were shaking your head when I said grapefruit. So maybe you oh. taste grapefruit. No, I was just shaking my head because um, it's written on the little printout as well. Oh, okay, okay. Probably what you were reading was very similar to the what same. It's probably the same. Yeah, yeah. Um, <clears throat> so I, also, I don't get grapefruit either. Um, it is. I think what I'm beginning to learn with IPAs is that uh, a lot of them, maybe not a lot of them, but the ones that are dry hopped and the ones that, like this one says it's heavily dry hopped. Yeah. The ones that incorporate dry hopping, uh, I tend to score them lower, I think. Mm. I don't think that I like the dry hopping. Okay. I think I like the wet hops. Yeah, maybe, wet hops. Maybe. I don't know. I don't know what that, I don't know the whole hop process. But I do know over time, um, we've had quite a few, especially recently, that are dry hopped. And I, maybe it's a WIPA thing. Maybe it's the West Coast um, style to dry hop it. But it's just not gaining a lot of traction in my book. Um, it is pretty piney. On the taste, which is good, uh, but it's yeah, not, I could see that. It's not great, and the the finish is a little strange to me. There's like yeah, a, the finish, yeah. The finish is kind of it's not off putting. It's not bad, but it's just different. It's just got this different quality. What is that? What is that? I don't know, but it's not ideal. It's. What is that? It's something. Is it science? It tastes like a chemical. Yeah, I was going to say it tastes like... It tastes like uh, the smell of Comet. Wow. You know Comet, right? Yeah. The uh, powdered bathroom cleaner. Yeah, it's like abrasive and it scrapes and <clears throat> so yeah. So if you clapped up a, a cloud of comet dust, a cloud of comet, some of it you actually it gets in your sinuses and you're like, oh man, what's that taste? It's dark horse crooked tree. That's what that is. Damn, that's a. I mean, not the whole beer. Yeah, just the back end, like you said, just the after. That that's the weird part that I was trying to identify. Yeah, I agree with you. It's not, um, it's just anything that tastes like chemicals to me, you know, I don't really like. So it's unpasteurized. Have we had oh. an unpasteurized beer? Oh, I don't know. So, uh, Unpa so pat, so past, pasturing, pa pasteurizing, pa pasteurizing, pasteurization, pasteurization. Yeah. Isn't that just effectively where you heat it up to where you kill anything that's living in it? Yeah, uh, well, I think some things, you know, or yeah, some things are, are killed. Yeah, like they do it to milk and stuff, right? I, I'm guessing that there's some active uh, organisms in milk that you don't want to kill. But yeah, I think it's just a you just heat it up, basically. Yeah, but isn't all beer heated at some point during the brewing process? I thought they, yeah, I thought they cooked or like boiled all this because that's called. Yeah. I think that. That's the wart, right? The W-O-R-T wart. Like when they've got all the ingredients in the big hot pot and it's kind of mm -hmm. cooked, you stir it with a crooked handle. Stir it handle. up with a crooked handle. Yeah, that's what I thought. 
Yeah. And then they, Unless you're Coors and you brew everything cold. Yeah. Yeah, I don't know. That's unpasteurized then, right? I guess. I don't know. I don't no. know either. No. Maybe what we're tasting is the microorganisms. That's what I'm saying. That's what I'm suggesting. I, I would be more interested in drinking microorganisms than I would chemicals. Yeah. I, would, I don't want to drink Comet. Hopefully, what they could do is they could give me, I could drink a tapeworm, and then I could get super thin, but not sick. Yeah. So I want, like, a safe tapeworm. And I'll just get, like, Mark Wahlberg from The Sixth Sense Thin. Yeah. You remember that? And now I'll just, and that's it. And then I'll pass it out through my butt. Boom. <laughs> Getting thin from beer. Get, get you a, I tell you what, with the tapeworm, get you, go get, just go ahead and get dentures and just start eating, you know, satisfy that sweet tooth, man. Yeah. If I have a tapeworm, why not? Right. I mean, but if you, if you care for your teeth, you can eat sweets can you? and not worry about dentures. Can you eat sweets at a tapeworm level? At a tapeworm level? Like, what's the, what do you think the, the balance is? Like, how often, how much, so if, if I, let's say I eat three squares a day, how much increase do I need to keep up with the tapeworm? Well, if it's all candy. <laughs> it's all candy. Uh, those aren't squares, then. Yeah, those are just sugar yeah. meals. Wait, if it's uh, all candy, how much candy do you, how many, let's say, regular sized Hershey bars, how many of those do you think I need to eat a day to stay alive with a tapeworm? 12. 12 a day? I could do that. Yeah, maybe dentures. Maybe. Uh, I mean, that's yeah. a lot of chocolate. Right. 12 candy bars a day. <clears throat> okay. So that's a suggestion for, for Dark Horse and for these science guys, these sheep guys. Ugh. Tapeworms. I think that's, then, I, in general, I think we need to find a way to incorporate tapeworms into our lives to, mm -hmm. so we can. I think they're better, they, there's, there's things we're not doing with tapeworms that we could yeah. be. Right. You know, we're just, they used to sell them as diet, diet remedies. Really? In like the early 1900s, yeah. Oh like they have ad, you, if you look up like old ads for diet uh, tricks and tips, uh -huh. there were tapeworm advertisements. I got worms. Like doctors would give you a tapeworm, and then they would flush it out somehow later on. I think that's great. It used to be a legal dietary supplement. I think, I think we need to get back to that. Yeah, we've lost our way. <laughs> we've lost our way. Put tapeworms in beer. You can advertise this beer. Uh, it helps you lose weight and then um, I mean you're, we're golden we're an obese society as there's is. only yeah yeah we're too fat right yeah me we can, include we can, we can maintain the food intake if we just have a tapeworm right you can we can we can stimulate the economy with our food buying dollars mm -hmm. and stay fit I think that's the way to go. Uh, I think, man, tapeworms. Uh, I don't know what the dangers are, but it doesn't seem like there's any, really, other than losing too much weight. I don't think there's – there's virtually zero downside to tapeworms. <laughs> zero like zero they, downside to tapeworms. They just got a bad rap. You know, once you get, like, a stigma that you're bad mm -hmm. news and it's really tough to shake, <laughs> I think tapeworms just got a bad yeah. rap. You know what it is? It was that shit ass ringworm that gave that made everyone hate the tapeworm. Ringworm. Ringworm's gross as fuck. Yeah. Yeah. Where I'm in the middle of I'm in the middle of watching that um, Britney Spears documentary. Oh yeah, I want to watch that. Framing Britney Spears, it's good. They should make one called Framing Tapeworm. Yeah, they should. I mean, shit, tapeworms got a bad rap. Got a bad rap. I want to watch this Britney Spears documentary. It is it good? It, is it, it done is well? Good. It's good, yeah. It's good, and it's it's cringy as well because, like, how you're talking about um, Al Bundy and old TV shows, and yeah, you watch it now. It's you know, lots of those jokes just yeah, make it they, they won't land. Yeah, it's very cringy. I mean, looking at this stuff with Britney Spears, it's the same thing. It's it's very uh, like I find it you know very gross and weird that you know the amount of like crazy attention the 
she had with the paparazzi and then like people interviewing her were very, you know, they, they spoke down to her as if she was extremely, you know, not intelligent and, and not right. coherent and just treated her you know, as very sexist and misogynist. And so, and it wasn't very long ago. <laughs> right. Yeah, it was. Yeah, it wasn't. It wasn't. So it's just, it's funny to, to look back on that stuff. Um, it's interesting. Yeah, it kind of sucks. But yeah. Oh God, it sucks really bad for her. For her, really uh, bad. she can't be freed, you know, from her contract with her dad. But got free, got free. Bruce. I was a big Britney Spears fan back in the early two thousands. I will, I will admit that. Who? I mean, who wasn't? Well, I think I was talking to Katie about this. Uh, you had to, you had to choose when you were, you know, if you're a young man of the times. You got, you had Christina Aguilera, you had Britney Spears. Yeah. And I think a lot of people chose sides. A lot of got a lot of a lot of young men chose uh-huh. sides. They were like, I either you want that Christina Aguilera vibe, uh, which kind of had like a more party girl vibe to it, uh, or you wanted that Britney Spears vibe, which is more like a you could take her out and she's your girlfriend kind of vibe. Okay. I think there was those two sides where Christina Aguilera is not going to be your girlfriend, but she'll she'll be, you'll have a nice night, and then never see her again. You know. That yeah. was the kind of, that's kind of what I took away from it. So if you, you had to choose one or the other, you could choose both. I mean, no one's stopping you, but that's, yeah, that's where most I was people going. did. Most people chose one or the other. And I chose Britney Spears. I lived, I liked to, uh, you know, some days I like Britney, some days I like Christina, some days I like Yeah, her. that's true. You know? So, yeah, yeah. I More. mean, it, just back then there was just ample eye candy now now like you said it's all influencers you got to find somebody to crush on if you're a young man not if you're old like us Ew. but uh there's yeah. no like uh young celebrities you know that young men all kind of rally around like britney spears because they're <clears throat> because they're influencers yeah i mean well I think- there, there's too many of them Oh, there's two. Okay, so there. Yeah, you know, there's not like one like what. There's not like one or two superstars that represent the young generation. Like back when when Britney Spears was popular, Christina Aguilera, and then you had like all the boy bands for the girls, and it was like they represent what the youth are into. But now, what the fuck are the youth into? Just a lot of different things. Yeah. TikTok. TikTok, you know, YouTubers, like uh, Twitchers, Twitchers, yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just there's no, there won't be a documentary about one pop icon. You don't think so? 2021, maybe. I mean, who's who? Guess Lady Gaga's around or whatever. That's to be determined. I mean, we're early. Yeah, we're early. Who do, who do these kids, like, we both have sons the same age. If they had to pick a poster to put on their wall of a girl, who's, who are they putting up? It's probably not one specific person. If, like, I mean, one of my sons would probably put up anime. Okay. You know, it would be... I can see that, yeah. It would be anime posters. Yeah, yeah, of, anime. Of fictional cartoon characters. Just, just somebody, yeah, yeah. But the, as far moon as or the TikTok influencers and all them, they're equally f- fictional humans. Yeah, right. They are. Yeah, they are. They're, they're I mean, fictional. ultimately, and I don't mean that in a derogatory way. I mean that in what what they put out and what they publicize and how they monetize mm-hmm. is a character. It is. It's a character. We don't live our lives in seven to eight second clips. Right. It's a yeah. character they're, they're putting on. They're entertainers. They entertain. And... Mm-hmm. I, I believe probably the majority of them have very separate lives where yeah. they do sit down and watch TV and things are normal. Um, but maybe I'm wrong. You know, maybe call me old fashioned. No, they do. I'm old. I mean, they have to. Um, yeah, I think that's true. I don't think there's, uh, I don't know any, any celebrities that kids are into. I don't either. There's just, this just not how it was. There was no T. There's no TRL anymore. MTV has died. Still is it around? Is it okay? I was just gonna ask. I mean, I don't have cable, 
but uh, I'm I'm assuming it's still a channel if you were to get cable. Yeah. Uh, and I think all they show are catfish episodes and uh, Jersey Shore. Hmm. Makes sense. That's what I would think. I mean, no one wants and no one idolizes Jersey Shore. <clears throat> you know, I think the Jersey Shore people think that they do, but we're all laughing at them, not with them. And by we, I mean people who watch it. I'm not one of them. What are you watching these days? Uh, not much. I've been more into movies lately. I know you don't watch TV much. Shows. TV. You watch a lot of HBO. Yeah, yeah, I don't watch. I do try to. I like. I like what's on HBO Max. But uh, since I finished Doom Patrol like several months ago, I haven't really found anything else to really sink my teeth into. Yeah. Um, so I've been kind of going back at, when I have some free time, watching some movies. I just watched Wolf of Wall Street yesterday. Uh, a couple other ones I've watched recently. But, you know, a movie I did just learn about. Have you ever seen Lords of Chaos? Man, that sounds so familiar. What? Refresh my memory. Then. I'm gonna, let me look up what the band's called. But it's, a, it's basically a, a documentary. Uh, not a documentary. It's more of a biopic of this band who invented um, black metal. And Macaulay Culkin's brother, Rory McCulkin, is the main, the main character. Um, so is it and this movie is one of, it's, a, it's completely nonfiction. It is fucked up beyond belief. Cool. It is super, du- I, I, I highly recommend it because it's a very captivating movie and the What's actors all do a great job. What medium um, is it? Hulu. Hulu has it. Um, but it's, you know, it's a movie. Um, so you can get it at your, you know, I don't know, video stores are still around. Are they characters? Are they actors? Yeah, it's got actors. It's not a documentary. So it's fictional. You said it's, it's non-fiction, which indicates... It's, it's non-fiction, not- but not a documentary. So it's acted... There's a script, but oh. they're acting out what really happened. So it's a mockumentary. Um, or not I, I, I mean, I don't think they're mocking anything. Is it based I think on a true story. Yeah, based on a true story. Okay. What does that make it? What does that make it then? I don't. It's know. based on a true story. It's basically. I understand. Um, it's about a Norwegian black metal band, uh, Mayhem. And this band is crazy. Did you ever watch the show on um, Adult Swim, Metalocalypse? Yeah, I love Metalocalypse. Yeah. Yeah. It's it's got some similarities. Oh, you know what what show I have been getting into that I think you'd actually like, and maybe you've already seen it, is Letter Kenny. Have you seen this show? I've watched a lot of Letter Kenny, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So I have, when I'm like working at home and I I need some background noise, I put Letter Kenny on. Fantastic show. I have no idea how they come up with the shit that they do on that show. Like, they yeah. must sit around for hours just throwing ideas on a whiteboard because there's some crazy shit in there. They've got uh, some, a lot of fantastic it is, it's good, show. It's good writing, and a lot yeah. of it's a lot of it's ad libbed. I don't. I yeah, think I think it's yeah. Very loose script. A lot of improv stuff. Uh, and the guy who talks with the reason why I remembered that because there's the the chubby guy who had who speaks in plurals. Mm-hmm. That same thing in Metalocalypse. With the guy with the gap teeth, he speaks in plurals a yeah. lot. Uh, so that reminded me of that. But uh, so Lords of Chaos is about this band Mayhem. It's an insane movie. If you have Hulu, I recommend you watch it. It's, it's uh, based on a true story. And it's just, I mean, you can't make it up. If you made this story up, people would be like, what a ridiculous story. We'll never make a movie about that. But because it's based on a true story, they made it. I I 100% believe you. Um, it what you said, you know, you, you, like you can't make this up. Mm-hmm. You know? um, when that when the whole uh, capital riots and insurrection happened, and I was yeah. talking to my sister about it, and we're talking about how do we explain this stuff to our kids. Mm-hmm. You know, I I took the approach of I didn't. I just avoided it. Yeah, like it's a blip. Because. Uh, honestly, it was like it was like you. 
you cannot make this up. Like, you can't make up yeah. the fact that a shirtless guy wearing buffalo horns, you know, ran into the chambers of Congress trying to hang the vice president. But that's, like, I, in my wildest, craziest imagination, I could not make that up. But that was, like, very real life. You know? Yeah, right. Yeah. So, so I believe... Yeah, I, I couldn't believe it either. It was insane. But with this movie specifically... Uh, Basically, like, if you hate posers, this movie is for you. Because this band started uh, black metal, and they basically were posers. They didn't really believe what they were saying, which I think you could probably draw a parallel to the insurrection protests. You know, a lot of the people who weren't there but were saying things didn't actually believe what they were saying. But people buy into this. And this is what happened with this band. Uh, fans of black metal bought in to the band and they were like, this is the life I need to live. I should burn down churches. You know, I should kill animals and stuff. Uh, and this is black metal. Well, then the band members, they didn't want to appear like posers. So that's what this movie is about. Is like the, the evolution of like a band that was like, we're hardcore, but they weren't to the, to the, what, where does it get you and how far can you take it before you finally admit, like, I'm not really that, like I'm a poser. Like until how long do you just let it linger until you admit it? Yeah. And uh, the movie takes you all the way to, through that whole process. Oh, it, is, it, it will make you so uncomfortable. Uh, it's a good movie. I, I highly recommend it. Love but it. it's also, if you are um, like a nice person and you, and like your favorite movie is frozen, don't watch this movie. Yeah. But like, if you're cool with like American History X or you're cool with uh, a lot of Quentin Tarantino movies, then you, you'd be okay with this movie. Yeah, I'm excited for it. <laughs> yeah, I hope you watch it. I, I, I want to hear your thoughts on it. I've got, I've got I know it. I don't have any, any stock in this movie. I wish I did now because I'm really pumping it up. Yeah. I'm not being paid to advertise this movie. Have, do you have Netflix or do you not yeah. have? You had Netflix? Yeah. Have you watched Shit's Creek yet? I haven't. I mean, Katie has watched the whole thing, which is why I haven't, because usually we try to watch TV together. Oh, okay. But I, I would like to see it, but I never, I'm rarely, it's like by myself to watch TV. It's actually really good. I, we turned it on the other day, sort of like you to have background noise, because we're yeah. just bored. And, and sure enough, like the first episode or two, we're like, we're like, I don't get it. This isn't, this is <laughs> Right, you know. Yeah. But then it, after a while of it being background noise, it actually becomes really good and and actually really funny. So, we're we're about to wrap up uh, Shit's Creek. Mm. Uh, probably today we'll probably wrap up Shit's Creek today, and then maybe I'll tune into that uh, Lords of Chaos. Yeah, yeah, check it out. And then yeah, so Letter Kenny was mine. I noticed that if if a sh like if I'm working background noise, if I close the laptop. The show's good. Yeah. You know, like, I closed it because I'm not going to work. I've decided mid-episode that I'm now paying attention to the TV. Yeah. And then yeah, have so, with Letterkenny? Uh, well, Letterkenny, you can kind of do both. But there's, they're so Canadian that you need to kind of pay attention. Yeah. You can't hear everything. But, like, that's what I'm saying with Shit's Creek. Um, it sounds like a laptop closer. It was background noise. But now you're in it. But then, yeah, you got to close yeah. the laptop. Yeah. Yeah, we got we got through a few seasons of Letterkenny, and then we got to this one episode where it's almost like a rap. Like, the, I, I, it's been years since we've watched Letterkenny. Mm -hmm. Whoever that main character is, um, whatever that guy's name is. Yeah. It's almost like this spoken poetry, and I think it's just pure 100% bullshit that this guy did, but it... It lasted because the episodes are really short. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you know, maybe twenty minutes long. Mm -hmm. Yeah, like ten minutes into this episode, and this guy didn't quit. It was just him standing in a field. Yeah, through this spiel. I just skipped that one. Yeah, that's well. That's where we turned. We found something else to watch, and then we just never went back. Yeah. Okay. So that's what lost me. Yeah, that's fair enough. First few seasons were really great. Uh, yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's what we're watching. Pretty much 
just background noise. But uh, Lords of Chaos, I've been watching movies. Any movie recommendations? Oh, man. Other than Lords of Chaos? I've been away from movies, honestly. Oh, okay. I've gotten away from them. Yeah, see, I was I was like that. I was like, wow, TV is way better than movies. But now I like need a bite size. Now bite sized is a movie. I just need a bite sized uh, entertainment, like mind uh, occupation, and then I can go back to work, you know, or go uh, back yeah. to do it like life. So that's what I've been doing. Yeah, I understand. I watched <laughs> Twelve Years a Slave for the first time. Uh, man, wow, great movie. I Have you seen that? No. Yeah, it's it's everything that they told you it was. Like usually when a movie wins an Oscar, I'm like, ah, it probably sucks because Osc- those people don't fucking know anything about entertainment. They're just like giving each other, you know, butt slaps. Good good games, basically. Yeah. But Twelve Years a Slave was phenomenal. You should check it out. What is it? I think that's on something. It's 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 a you know Hollywood blockbuster movie, but I think it's streaming somewhere. Maybe Amazon. I don't know. At this point, I've logged into my my sister and I have uh, have gathered up all of the different streaming services you can have, and between the two of us, we mix and match, you know, what we pay for. So, like, I get Netflix for free from T-Mobile, and I pay for Hulu and HBO. She pays for Amazon and a couple other things, and now we just give each other our passwords. So. I think it's on Amazon. Yeah. Don't quote me on that. Uh, great movie. Me and, me, and, uh, me and Jessica, my my ex, we do the same thing. She, yeah. She pays for Netflix and I pay for Hulu. And we just uh, swap yep. the password. Swap it up. And they know. And they're fine with it. Oh, yeah. That's why they let you create different family members' profiles. Yeah, they don't care. Yeah. So... Did you know that I got rid of my Prime? I didn't know that, but I also don't have Prime. I just don't shop on Amazon enough. Yeah, I, I quit. Well, so they um, they renewed my annual Prime membership. Mm-hmm. They never sent me an email like, hey, next week we're going to renew. Um, also, equally, when they renewed, they also didn't <clears throat> did not send me a, a, a receipt like, hey, we renewed. Mm. You know, yeah, yeah. So all of a sudden, I saw that a uh, hundred and twenty something dollars was missing, and it was charged to Amazon. Yep. So I, I called fraud, and I canceled my card and everything. And yeah. And sure enough, Amazon came came back and said, "Hey, uh, your annual Prime fee didn't go through; it got canceled. Uh, so we have to cancel your Prime." And I, I sent them an email back saying, like. You need to tell your customers that you're going to do that, this. That's hilarious. I, I thought it was fraud. So now yeah. I've canceled it. And now I, I did this email iteration with, with Amazon two or three times yeah. to the point where now I'm like, you know what? I, I'm just going to see how I can live without Prime in my life. Yeah, I mean, you can. That, that's exactly what happened to me. I saw a hundred and twenty something dollar charge on my account. It doesn't come in as Amazon Prime or membership or anything. It just comes as an Amazon.com purchase. Yeah. So I'm like, oh, shit, my card has been hacked. Yep. Someone bought something on Amazon. It wasn't me. It wasn't Katie. And so we canceled our cards, too. We did the same thing. Yeah. Uh, yeah, you do have to notify your customers, Amazon. And, yeah, you can live without it, um, especially since some of the things that Amazon was convenient for, for delivering uh, things to your door quickly, uh, Kroger walmart all the local stores allow you to order with no shipping charge you can pick up or sometimes get it delivered it's really amazon's uh game has been figured out by the local the local stores there's almost nothing you can't get unless it's a niche item from a a retailer that you know only exists somewhere else yeah i mean the entire world figured out how to how to continue to operate through the pandemic and Ultimately, yep. Amazon did get a, a quick bite of that pie, but yep. overall, everyone's going to start to eat Amazon's, you mm-hmm. know, lunch because yep. of it because they they all learned how to how to evolve as well. That's so, exactly right. So yeah, so I'm done with Amazon. Um, 
I deleted it from my phone and I don't have it anymore. And, uh, and, and I'm still alive, you know, yeah. so I'm living without Amazon. Yep. You'll be fine. I've done it for months, did the same thing with Facebook. So if you guys have been trying to reach me through the brew crew account, I deleted Facebook, uh, from my phone. So I don't get those messages. It's the cookies, man. If you guys aren't actually like, you know how they give you the warning that says like, we have cookies. If you aren't actually looking at your cookies, then you aren't in control of your technical life at all. Yeah. Uh, there's some fucked up cookies on there. Like they're tracking when you log into your bank accounts and stuff. And that's too far for me. So I, I went ahead and deleted Facebook because it was their cookies that were the most invasive. The worst. So the worst that I've seen as far as an app goes is DoorDash. Um, oh, yeah. And it's primarily to feed third party apps. Mm -hmm. But they, DoorDash pulls data from your phone every nine minutes. No shit. Every I need to get rid of that. Every single nine minutes, they pull wow. data from your phone. So, and, and you know, that's the that's the um, the highest frequency I believe that I've seen is mm -hmm. DoorDash. But every app on your phone is is are they're making those data pools uh, numerous times throughout the day. I mean, I've I've never had the Facebook app just because. I, yeah, good. I have an extreme distrust of Facebook, but it's yeah. funny sitting there watching the, you know, TV on Hulu. You, I don't pay for the premium Hulu, so I still get commercials in it. Mm -hmm. And one of them was a minute and thirty second long commercial from Facebook about how how they support internet regulation. Oh well, yeah, of course they do. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. Uh, highly ironic. Well, thanks. You know, we're using smartphones. But anyway, it's a beer podcast. It is, yeah. We got it is. But hey, we just gave some good information, I think. Check your cookies. Definitely. That, data privacy is important. You don't want Facebook to know when you log into your fucking bank account. I don't. I don't want them to know anything about my bank account because they're Facebook. It's a shit company that deals with friends social networks i don't need like that's just supposed to be a separate part of my digital life not so intertwined but anyway that's my opinion go watch uh movies and tv shows that we talked about check us out on facebook yeah well yeah check us out on facebook <laughs> go ahead and download it on your phone and uh like us subscribe yeah. listen to our podcast uh you can you can use DuckDuckGo to check facebook and then you won't have a leak. You won't have a data leak. Oh, that's nice. Yeah, DuckDuckGo is pretty good. So uh, use that. And their cookies basically get containerized. So they won't yeah. read other apps. Good. I like cookies. I mean, they're delicious. They are good. I haven't had one I didn't like. Unless it was like um, basil I, flavored or something. No, I don't like those Girl Scout cookies that have the coconut on them. Oh, I like those ones. Samoas. I like them all. Samoas? <gasps> Samoas, yeah. Sammy Sosas. Samosas. Samosas. I don't like mm -hmm. those. I don't like... I like coconut water, and I like the flavor of coconut. I don't like the texture of coconut. It grosses me out. Just don't eat coconut oil, because you might shit your pants. Yeah, I used to eat coconut oil, but then it turns out that it's... They say like it's really healthy for your heart, but it turns out it's three times unhealthy for your heart. Whoa. Like it's really bad for you. Jeez, I didn't know that. Well, I was eating the chocolate with coconut uh, oil because it didn't have like carbs or something. Yeah. And uh, it, I would shit my brains out. Like, grease light. Is it? 
like it was awful. It would make me have to go to the bathroom like 10 times a day. Um, sugar-free candy is the best laxative if you need one. I'm all good here. <laughs> That's good. All good. That's good. Uh, all right. Well, I mean, I think that we've reached our, our point here. End point. This is the Brew Crew Podcast. This episode one, uh, 127. We're Solid. getting up there. Holy shit. 127. That's awesome. 127 weeks. I think they made a movie about this. It's like a oh. guy who cuts his arm off. Yeah. James Franco. That's what yeah, I like. Jim, he, 127 weeks. Uh, he, has, he does a podcast for 127 weeks, cuts his arm off, and says, thanks for joining us. This is the Brew Crew Podcast. <laughs> See ya. Ha, ha, ha.